Today we're going to talk about mobility, specifically hip mobility, and I'm going to show you two ways to release your hips and two ways to strengthen your hips. Now mobility is your body's ability to move freely within the joint without restriction and with control. So <laughs> that you take your time with these movements. I'm gonna start with the release. I'm gonna use the J Method recovery ball, and I'm gonna find two points in my hips, the front and the back. I'm gonna to refer to them as the TFL, right here in the front, this muscle, along the front of your thigh, below your pelvic bone, and the glute medius, right above the meaty part of your glute. So to find this, I highly suggest you take your thumb into the back side and wrap your fingers in the front. Typically, you'll find those muscles that way, but everyone's body is built differently. Before you release, it's important to find those points that you want to hit into when you lie onto your side. So before you go in there, find the point. You can kind of feel around with your fingertips, see if there's any points of discontent, and that's where we're gonna go into with the recovery ball. So I'm gonna start on my right side. I'm gonna lay down on my side, it's right in here. From here, I'm gonna gently apply my body weight into the ball. And I'm gonna take my body as if it's almost rotating flat down on my chest and somewhere in between lateral. So I'm gonna fold over slightly. I'm gonna find the point. I'm gonna bend that right knee. That's gonna help me. From here, I'm gonna keep the knee into the floor. I'm gonna take my left leg over the top. Now I'm really penetrating into the recovery ball, into the fascia that's overlying the muscle. Here I'm gonna practice internal rotation at that right hip by taking that right foot, bringing it up towards the ceiling, forward towards the floor ahead of me, and then back down. So I'm gonna repeat this movement, lifting the back foot, lowering it down. So mobilizing the hip, to allow the ball to further penetrate into the front of my hip to find that release. And I might perform this six to 10 times until I find that point of discontent alleviate with its tension so that my body can move more freely into the mobility drills. Since I'm on this right side, I'm gonna hop right on over to the glute medius. So I'm gonna come back up to kneeling. I'm gonna find the glute med, take the ball into it, try to feel around. Once I find the point that I want to target, I'm gonna lie down onto my back. And same thing here, I don't wanna be on my side and I don't quite wanna be on my back either. Make sure the ball is not in your hip bone. So once I find that point, so again, somewhere in between side facing and lying on your back, somewhere in between there. So once you find that, I found it, you can lay down if you like. And then I want you to take that right knee and bend it at 90. And then I want you to practice externally rotating at that hip so you further penetrate into the ball and release. So I'm almost flat on my back, but I'm turned gently towards you. And I'm just gonna practice externally rotating the hip six to 10 times to further penetrate that glute medius before I perform the mobility drills. So once I get into there and I feel a release, which I definitely do, the recovery ball is a perfect size and density to target those small points on our body and to really allow for a release. Now once I've hit those two points, I'll follow through on the other side as well. So again, front of the hip, TFL, somewhat lateral, somewhat facing the floor. Once I find that spot, this is the position Ideally for me, I'm gonna bend that left knee at 90. I'm gonna pick that left foot up towards the ceiling and back down internal rotation at the hip. You wanna relax, you wanna breathe, you wanna help that tension on the fascia dissipate. So the more relaxed you are, the better it'll be for you. 
and again, six to 10 times. And you might want to find different points. The muscle ro lo runs lengthwise, so you might want to move laterally up and down to find a different point. And you can spend more time. There's not just one point that you're going to want to target in the glute med or the TFL. As those muscles, again, the TFL runs lengthwise, the glute medius horizontally above the glute max. So once you hit that point, I'm going to go into my glute medius on the left side. Again, you can start by lying on your back and then gently turn towards your left side. I'm going to bend that left knee at 90 and I'm going to practice those external rotations, allowing that ball to penetrate deeper down into the muscle. The fascia is what covers your muscle. So you want to release any tension so the muscle can move more freely. Really important to do pre-mobility drills. So next up, I'm going to show you two mobility drills that you can perform to help strengthen the hips. So once you find that release, we're going to go into the mobility drill. For the TFL, we're going to lie onto our back and we're going to perform a isometric glute bridge, which really means you're holding the glute bridge in one of its positions, which will be its contracted state here. So we're going to lengthen the front of the hip that we just released, and you're going to tighten the back side. So you want to use your mind, connect your mind to your glutes, and really tense up your glute muscles. Focus on strengthening the back side, and you can hold this anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute. Focus on lengthening the front of your hip, pelvis tucked under, spine is neutral, and just relax into this position. But as relaxed as you are for the front hip, I want you to tense up the back hip now. So drive tension through the back, push your feet into the floor, you should feel your glutes starting to shake as the front releases. Now generate as much tension as you can for 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Release. Now let's go into the glute medius. This drill, we're going to one at a time, one side at a time. I'm going to focus on the left side first. Great tip here to get a deeper contraction in your hamstring and glute, I'm going to take the recovery ball and place it behind my knee. If you don't have a recovery ball, you can do it without. But this is going to be a great way to provide some feedback to make sure I am using my hamstring and glute. So we're going to go slow and controlled in an extension of the hip, an external rotation where we're going to circle it around and bringing our hip up into hyperflexion as flex as we can. Most of our days, we're spent in certain positions, mostly seated, and our hips are in flex state in only one degree. We're going to take it in hyperflexion, past as if you were sitting in a chair, and we're going to take it as in high extension as we possibly can. Tip here, though, is when you move your hip, try to avoid moving your lower back. The spine is going to remain neutral. You're going to take your hands out underneath your shoulders. You're going to press into the floor, tuck your pelvis under slightly, Generate some tension in that left side. Pull your heel towards your glute. Lift your knee up off the floor, and you're going to search as high as you can go into hip extension. You might not feel as if you're getting high from the floor, and you might want to try to really increase that range, but without extending your low back, so keep that flat. Once you've found your end range here, you're going to slowly externally rotate as if there were a fire hydrant by your side. And then you're going to circle it around without shifting the hips to the left or to the right, keeping those hips neutral, facing the floor. Bring your knee under your chest as much as you can, and then release the knee to the floor. We're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to reverse the order. So you're going to take that knee up into that hyperflex state, more flex than if you were sitting in a chair. You're going to move and abduct the knee away from your midline, 
circle it back around, knee up as high as you can from the floor without extending your back, tighten up that glute, and release. Let's do it one more time. Extend, externally rotate, try to hit the end range of each of these movements. Circle around, knee up into hyperflexion, back down, the reverse. Circle around, abs engaged, hands pressing into the floor, and release. Let's do the other side. Same exact thing, right side working. Place the ball behind your knee and hamstring. So it's pressing into your calf and hamstring muscle. Drive your right heel towards your glute. Push and press into the floor. Lift the knee from the floor. Extension as high as you can without moving your spine. Turn the knee out. Externally rotate. And you're going to try to circle it around. See how high the knee can come away from the floor without turning your hip down. You want to keep your hips level. Level, bring it up in towards your chest. Stay active in your shoulder blades. Knee down to the floor, let's reverse. Hyperflexion, out to abduction. Externally rotate at the hip. Come up into extension, hold, squeeze, generate tension. And back down one more time. Hip extension. Use the feedback into that ball so you know you're using your hamstring and glute. Press into the floor, spine neutral, externally rotate at the hip. Keep your knee away from the floor as much as you can. Circle it up and towards your chest. Hold here, hyperflexion. Knee down, knee back up under your chest. Keep pressing your palms through the floor. Neutral spine, circle back around, hip extension as high as you can without bending your spine or breaking at it and release to the floor. Now with this release and the strengthening portion, you should be able to feel like you can move more freely in your hips and be more effective in the moves that you are looking to achieve. Mm -hmm.